evening to all of you. Good One more time. Good evening to all of you. So much better, so much better. Um, I want to welcome you all to the American Embassy here in Algiers. For many of you, I believe it's your first time. How, from how many of you is your first time coming to the American Embassy? not be your last time. If it is, it's your own fault because we're going to be sending you invitations to come to our talks, discussions, concerts, exhibits. We always have things going on. So please make sure that you take a look at our website. And for many of you, um, you were invited by the schools, the English language institutes where you, um, where you study. So we are probably going to ask for email addresses and a contact list so we'll be able to contact you on our own too. Um, so I want to thank you for braving the weather. It's cold, it's rainy in Algiers, but you have come anyway, and that tells me that you're hungry for the knowledge that Mr. Miles Marshall Lewis is going to be sharing with you this evening. A little bit about our speaker. Um, how old do many of you think he is? <laughs> Out of curiosity. Two. Anybody else? Thirty. writer, social critic, um, pop culture critic, Miles Marshall Lewis here with us. And I would like if you all join with me in a round of applause to introduce Mr. Miles Marshall Lewis. Greetings, greetings. This microphone works. I'm going to use it. <laughs> uh, going to begin with a quote from my first book uh, entitled Scars. It was published in 2004. It's a collection of essays about uh, my background growing up in the Bronx uh, in New York City and uh, the rise and decline of hip hop culture. The American dream dictates that you graduate from college, do your part for the economy by joining the workforce in some corporation that keeps the system running, get married, and buy a home in the suburbs to raise your children. Hip-hop destroyed that fantasy. Over the past 30 years, hip-hop has invented a new matrix by which people of color who perhaps never attended college or even completed high school establish their own companies, becoming millionaires without conforming to the WASP style of corporate America, making money by trading in the commodity of black culture. MCs only reap a small percentage of the overall profit generated by their music, just like their counterparts in the pop, rock, and R&B genres of the recording industry. But rhyming is a viable way to manifest wealth for many who might once have pursued a legal means to do so. Many DJs became record producers and attained riches. Hip hop has spawned publications, clothing companies, music videos, television shows, literature, motion pictures, restaurants, music studios, artwork, theater, and dance choreography, providing untold opportunities for people of color whose options would have been severely limited in a previous age. Our walk, our talk, our dress, our very attitudes are marketed and promoted and sold largely by us for the very first time in history. This is the predominant legacy of hip hop culture. I begin with that quote tonight because uh, I do uh, honestly believe that that is the predominant legacy of hip hop culture, that it's uh, allowed all these opportunities for uh, African Americans uh, and for the youth 
uh, in America and really throughout the world as hip hop spread its tentacles uh, around the globe uh, since its inception in 1973. Uh, I'm going to speak a little bit now about the history of hip hop. Uh, hip hop is generally believed to have begun in the early 1970s, uh, somewhere between 1970 and 1973, as the creation of three uh, specific DJs uh, by the names of uh, Africa Bambata, Grandmaster Flash, and DJ Cool Herc. All three DJs had their origins in Jamaica and uh, in the West Indies and uh, migrated to the Bronx, New York uh, in the early 70s uh, with their parents and began playing records in the community centers and the parks of the South Bronx. Uh, I'm going to play some music to illustrate different points. Uh, this is a song by Grandmaster Flash that illustrates his major contribution to the culture of hip hop, which is uh, the scratch technique. Uh, many of you, once you hear it, will be familiar with the scratching and how it sounds. It's, it's uh, although people don't generally play music on turntables anymore, that was the predominant way to play them once upon a time. <laughs> and uh, by spinning the record on the turntable backwards uh, and forwards, it produces a sound that is, uh, that never really existed prior to the innovations of DJ Grandmaster Flash. Uh, here's an example. This title, the title of this song is uh, called The Adventures of Grandmaster Flash on the Wheels of Steel. And the wheels of steel refer to the turntables themselves. He say, he say, he say, he say, he say, one for the trouble, two for the time. Come on, girls, let's rock that. Fast by Freddy told me everybody's side. DJ spinning, I said, my, my. Flash is fast, flash is fast, flash is fast. Flash is cool, Francois, c'est pas, flash ain't no do. He say, one for the trouble, This is a collection of songs by other people, not Grandmaster Flash. However, it's an example of his skills mixing different records between the two turntables. Bon. Um, Grandmaster Flash sort of came after the other two DJs I mentioned because uh, really uh, it was DJ Cool Herc who began playing different records in the community centers and parks in the South Bronx and inspired uh, Grandmaster Flash and Africa Bambata. But the three of them are sort of a holy trinity of uh, hip hop culture. Uh, everything sprang from them. Uh, in 1979, for at least five or six years after these three DJs were throwing parties in the community centers and in the parks, there was a, a very famous song that made uh, the radio airwaves around the world uh, entitled Rapper's Delight by a group called uh, the Sugar Hill Gang that popularized hip hop and made it a viable musical form uh, in the eyes of the uh, music comp record companies and music corporations. Uh, you'll all, I'm sure, be familiar with it. out of my power. <laughs> 